Remember in experiment five, we heated copper to carbonate hydroxide, we made copper oxide, and then we treated it with uh, sulfuric acid to make copper sulfate. And so you saw the blue solution last time. And look at the solution now, the crystals have come out. Can you see the crystals in there, the bottom? Crystallize out. Those are beautiful crystals of copper two sulfate. Five hydrate is what that is. Five of the water molecules are coordinated to the metal ion and the other water molecule. Hydrogen bonds the complex to the sulfate ion in the crystal structure. We're in the laboratory to do experiment number six, which studies the allotropic forms of sulfur. Allotropic forms of an element, different forms of an element. Probably the most famous one is uh, diamond and graphite are both forms of carbon. Diamond is one of the hardest known minerals and graphite is one of the softest. And your pencil lead is actually made out of graphite. So when you're writing on the paper, you're just putting graphite onto the paper. And uh, another one example is oxygen, which O2, we all need to breathe that. And O3 is another allotropic form of oxygen that's poisonous. Same atoms, but different molecules. Okay, so sulfur has uh, several allotropic forms. We're gonna study that today. And the most stable one at room temperature up to about, oh, 96 degrees or so is rhombic sulfur. And here's a picture of what rhombic sulfur looks like. Nice, beautiful crystals. See those crystals, they're pretty. And they have rhombic shapes. And then this is the model of the molecules that you find in there. Okay, and there, the formula is S8, S8 molecules. And then when you heat this up and melt it, and another form of sulfur is monoclinic form, and that's, that's a, it's stable at higher temperatures. So if you melt this and let it solidify, you'll get the monoclinic form, which forms needle shaped crystals. So we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna take some. This is powdered sulfur. It's still, it's still rhombic sulfur, except it's little small particles. And then we're gonna take some of that powder and melt it. And then we're gonna pour the liquid into this filter paper and let it solidify and it'll change into monoclinic sulfur, which will be different crystal structure, but still S8 molecules. Let me get my test tube holder here to do this correctly. We'll start melting it now. It's starting to melt. And it forms the same color liquid. Can you see it melting? It's already melting. I don't want to heat it too hard. Because we have, have another change here. I'll just gradually melt it. Let me turn this over here. See it's starting to melt now. See the liquid in there now? Okay. Once it gets all liquid, I'll pour it into the filter paper. There it is. It's almost all melted now. Just a second. Let it get all melted. melted. A little bit left. Is that molten sulfur? I think it's all melted now, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, now what I'm going to do is pour this into this filter paper. And then it'll start crystallizing on the outside, and when it gets partly crystallized, I'll pour the rest out. Pour it back into that beaker if you want to. It's crystallizing now. See the needles in there? Can you see the needles? You can see needles in there. That's monoclinic sulfur. So just different shaped crystals. The molecules pack together a little differently. It's still S8 though. So that's monoclinic sulfur. Okay. 
It worked. Good. By the way, sulfur is found in nature. This is a mineral specimen of sulfur, and it's the rhombic sulfur. That's the one that's found in nature. Isn't it pretty? By the way, I can smell it. When I'm actually smelling the sulfur dioxide being produced as it oxidizes slowly off the surface, and sulfur dioxide has a real strong odor, so you can actually smell sulfur. You're actually smelling the sulfur dioxide coming off of it. Okay, now we're going back over here. I put some more uh, sulfur into this test tube. We're going to heat it again, melt it, except this time we're going to heat it more strongly, and you see what happens when you heat it more strongly. We'll see if we can melt some of this off to the side. Yeah, melting that off a little bit. There you go. Get some of that molten off. Okay, there we go. Now we got it. Let's get it all melted and then heat it more strongly and see what happens. Now I could pour the other one out easily into that. the sulfur dioxide, can't you? I have show sulfur burning. No, we don't want to do that. Can you see it's getting darker in color? What we're doing, we're breaking up the S8 molecules and making chains of sulfur atoms. And it's getting dark in color because at the end of the chain you have free radicals and they absorb light. Oh, look, you can't pour it now. Can you see it? Stop pouring. It's very viscous now. That's because the chains are all tangled up. And if you heat it more strongly, it actually the chain will break up into shorter chains and then you can flow it. And then it flows better and I can pour it out. You see it's already starting to flow a little better. Can you see that? It's flowing better. Okay, now once I get so it flows out, I'll pour it into this beaker of water here. And some vapors coming out too. You see the vapors? I think we'll put this in the hood and get a little bit of sulfur dioxide. Get up with my fingers and bring it out here and watch this. It stretches. It's wood. It's kind of hot. Sorry. <laughs> Hadn't cooled off yet. It stretches. It's rubbery. Can you see that? It's stretching. It's a, like a rubber, right? Well, rubber is a polymer too. So it's a polymer of sulfur. Look at that. It stretches. Can you see it? We call this plastic sulfur, so that's another allotropic form of sulfur. It's not crystalline. It's, look at that. Can you see it stretching? Isn't that something? It's really rubbery. That's really remarkable. And by the way, if you let this thing stand, it gradually changes back into rhombic sulfur. In fact, you can see it's starting to get a little orange now. You see it? Or yellow? A little bit of yellow color? It's already changing. And, it gets, and once it changes back, it's no longer rubbery. That is remarkable, isn't it not? And that's a good place to quit.